Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. I'd like to say hello to Liam, Natalie, and Ethan from Pittsburgh. Hello to Audrey and Anna Lee. Hello to Teresa from Chicago. Hello to Kaya. And hello to Jerner and her little brother Emerson, who is three months old. I'd like to say happy birthday to Avery, who is having a birthday on April 11th. Happy birthday to Ronnie from Brooklyn, New York, who is having her fifth birthday on April 11th. Happy birthday to Lily, who is turning eight on April 11th. And happy birthday to Harper, who is turning six on April 12th. Happy birthday to you all. I hope you have a wonderful day. Shoutouts and birthday wishes are one way we give thanks to our supporters. If you would like to support us and receive more bedtime entertainment like this, please visit our support page at sleeptightstories.org support. Thank you. This is a story about a corgi who wants to play basketball. Cooper thinks he would really enjoy playing basketball, so he decides to try out for the team. When he gets there, he realizes that being a corgi might not be the best thing for a dog who wants to play basketball. Coach tells him not to give up, but can Cooper learn to play? The Corgi Who Played Basketball Cooper's alarm went off and he stretched, yawned, and hopped out of bed to walk toward his window. He was so happy to see that the sun was shining and almost all the snow was gone. It really must be spring, he thought. Cooper didn't really like winter much. It wasn't the cold that bothered him. He had a nice thick coat to help protect him, but all the snow. Whenever his friends would call him out to play any games, he would get lost and no one could see him. Great for hide and seek, but not for anything else. While his friends were German Shepherds, Labradors, and other large dogs, Cooper was a corgi. And with his incredibly short legs, navigating through deep snow was a challenge. One time when he jumped off the back step, he went so deep into the snow, his mother thought he simply disappeared. Cooper's friends didn't mind so much, and in winter, they called him the shark, because all you could see were the tips of his ears sticking out of the snow. Hopping into the kitchen for breakfast, Cooper was so happy, he didn't even complain that his mom had prepared, yet again, scrambled eggs for breakfast. You certainly look happy this morning, Coop, she said. The snow is gone, Mom. No more shark. From now on, I'm going to be the badger. Badger? She asked with a smile. It's all I could come up with on short notice. It's finally spring, Mom. I can't wait to smell the new smells, run with my friends, and roll in some mud puddles. Cooper's mom groaned at the thought of him rolling in the mud. It wouldn't be so bad if he didn't run in the house and shake all the mud off on the furniture. Cooper gobbled down his food and ran out the door to go to school. Don't forget to sign up for a new activity today. They have lots of new ones for the end of the semester. His mom yelled out the door as he quickly ran up the street. Arriving at school, he walked by the gym and saw that the basketball team was looking for some new members for both the school team 
and the Summer Recreation League. Cooper looked in and saw that there was a special early morning practice. Wow, why haven't I thought of playing basketball before? He thought. Playing ball is my absolute favorite game. And this ball is so much bigger and it looks like so much fun. I'm going to come after class and sign up for the team. At lunchtime, he shared with his friends, Buster and Buck, that he had planned on trying out for the basketball team. Buster and Buck looked at each other. Are you sure about this? Buster asked. Yes, I think so. I mean, it looks like fun and we play ball all the time, replied Cooper. Yes, we do, but that's soccer and catch and, well, you don't think you might find it too difficult? Said Buck as he turned his head like he was confused. Difficult? It looked just like what we play all the time. A court, a ball, and you run around with it. I mean, I'm not the fastest runner for sure, but we always have fun when we play ball. Before Buster and Buck could say more, the bell rang and it was time to go for class. Cooper arrived at the gym right after the bell. While playing on the basketball team at Cooper's school is mostly for fun, some of the players take it more seriously than others. Everyone that is here to try out for the basketball team, please gather over here, yelled the coach. What's he doing here? One of the Great Danes on the team said quietly with a snicker. Yeah, really. He doesn't expect to be able to play with us big dogs, does he? Replied a German shepherd. Hmm, I hope he isn't serious, said another Great Dane. Okay, pups, we are going to play a game. Red jerseys against blue. Come get a jersey and go out and have some fun. Afterwards, if you still want to join the team, come and see me, and I'll give you some papers for your parents to sign, said the coach. Cooper ran up, grabbed a blue jersey, and ran out to the basketball court. Wow, there certainly are a lot of Great Danes on this team, he thought. I didn't know there were so many in our school. The coach blew the whistle and the game began. Cooper was very excited and was hopping up and down. As the game began, the other dogs were passing the ball and running down the court, and Cooper would run right after them. Unfortunately, by the time he caught up to them, they would be already on their way back. Some of them would even run right over him. Pass the ball to me, pass the ball to me, he yelled to one of his teammates. None of the other dogs had ever played with a corgi before, so when he called out to them, they would look around and not see him. They didn't think to look down. he started to realize that maybe this wasn't quite the same as playing with his friends. Then the opposing red team had the ball and were running right towards him. This was his chance, he thought, to get the ball. But when he was about to get it, the ball and the dog bounced right over the top of him and shot the ball into the basket. The other blue team members all groaned. And he could hear some of his teammates complain about how it was all his fault and that a corgi should not be playing basketball. Okay, change up. Those on the court, change with those on the bench, yelled the coach. Cooper felt sad. Basketball was really not like soccer at all and the basket was so high. And unlike his friends, Buster and Buck, these dogs ignored him and didn't really seem to like playing with him at all. For the rest of the game, Cooper sat on the bench with his head between his paws, 
while he watched all the other pups having fun playing. Okay, pups, that's it for today. For those of you thinking about staying, please get an information sheet and a form for your parents. We meet after school, so don't forget a change of clothes and bring a snack if you can. Well-fueled pups are happy pups, said the coach. Cooper slowly started to make his way out of the gym when the coach yelled out to him, Hey, Coop, you not interested in playing? Coop walked over to the coach and said, I don't think so, coach. I don't think I am built for basketball. What? Because you are a corgi? Nonsense. I always say you can't coach size. Simply being a tall dog does not mean that you will be able to play basketball. Being one of those tall breeds is not a prerequisite to join my team. I played poorly today, coach, said Cooper. Yes, you didn't play to your potential, but you had spunk and enthusiasm. And besides, this is a team sport. A good team has players with all kinds of talents and abilities. As a corgi playing on our team, it can feel overwhelming playing amongst taller dogs. But you can make up for that with how you play, especially if you are a team player. And do you want to know a secret? Sure, Cooper said, already feeling a bit better. Being a corgi may actually be an advantage. With practice, you can be faster and more nimble than your larger teammates. I bet you could even run right through the other team's defense. So take these papers home to your parents, think it over, and if you decide to try again, come a bit early each practice and I'll help you work on some skills. Cooper thought about what the coach said on his walk home from school. He liked to try new things and his mom always told him to be brave. You will never know what you can achieve unless you try, was one of her favorite things to say. Over the coming weeks, Cooper would go to basketball practice early, and the coach would help him work on the fundamentals before they would have a practice. He still seemed to spend most of his time on the bench while they played games, and when he did get to play, he seemed as helpless as he was in the beginning. Whenever he would start to get disappointed, the coach would always say, remember the three P's, Coop. Patience, persistence, and perseverance. Cooper didn't really know what those words meant, but if the coach kept spending his time helping him, he owed it to him to continue to try his best. In the final game of the semester, Cooper was in his usual spot cheering the team on from the bench. He may not be the most accomplished member of the team, but he was determined to be the most enthusiastic. Many on the team appreciated his cheering, but the larger dogs still didn't appreciate him. During a particularly rough play, when Cooper's team was trying to get through the visiting team's defense, a large yelp could be heard, followed by a whistle. One of the Great Danes hurt his paw and limped off the court. Coop, you're up, the coach yelled. Cooper hesitated and looked at the coach with uncertainty. What are you waiting for? Get out there on the court, the coach yelled again. In the stands, he could see his friends Buster and Buck jumping up and down and yelling something. Cooper wasn't sure if they were cheering him on or telling him to stay on the bench. He took a deep breath and got in position. The game started. The tallest German shepherd on the team had the ball, but he was surrounded and blocked 
and had no one to pass it to except Cooper. He hesitated. He was running out of time. Pass the ball to Cooper, the coach yelled. And so he did. Cooper caught the ball and started down the court and was immediately met with a wall of muscular mastiffs growling at him. He gulped, took another deep breath, and verged left and verged right. It was no use, he couldn't get past them. He was faster, but they were bigger. He was stuck, and the crowd was yelling. Some were groaning. Remember your secret, the coach yelled at the top of his lungs. And he did. Cooper started running fast again, faked left and then faked right. But instead of either, ran right under the opposing team's player's legs with the ball towards the net, where he passed the ball to an open teammate, a Great Dane, who then shot the ball into the basket. They won, and the crowd cheered. At the end of the game, after each team congratulated each other on a game well played, a few of the larger dogs approached Cooper. You're not so bad after all, said one of the Great Danes. You're pretty fast. I didn't even see you running under the other players with the ball, said a German shepherd. Good job and welcome to the team, said the injured Great Dane. The coach gave him a pause up and said, All that work paid off, Coop. I knew you could do it. See you this summer. This is going to be the best summer ever, Cooper thought as he walked off the court to walk home with Buster and Buck. And that's the end of our story. Good night. Sleep tight. Thank you.